Yolanda Lawson, 124th president of the National Medical Association. So historically, the National Medical Association is the oldest and largest national organization of African-American physicians in this country. We were formed in 1895 and really formed because the AMA did not allow uh, physicians of color and even women historically, um, entrance into or admission into that organization. I also served as the chair of the Council on the Concerns of Women Physicians. Previously, there were many more men in medicine than women, and women in the organization needed a space. To think about that women, the journey for leadership for a woman, um, to see leadership modeled by women. I come from a rural community of about 10,000 people. Um, I had not seen a black doctor until I was in college, right? But I had decided in 10th grade I was going to be a doctor. I remember seeing a room and that many black physicians. I had never seen anything or been exposed to something like that. I remember talking to the woman, the first black woman to graduate a majority of PWI medical school south of the Megason Dixie line went to my medical school. Dr. Edith Irby Jones, the legend. She was the first female president also of the National Medical Association. Once Dr. Irby Jones told me a story around when she was a medical student at the University of Arkansas, they placed her in a box to take her classes and her courses um, because of course she could not breathe the same air as the, the white student. So she's the only black student in this class. They placed her in this box that she had to take classes from within. And so I think about stories like that, I share stories like that with this next generation because it is important for them to acknowledge. I have been committed to women's health. One of the things that inspired me most was the strength of women. Seeing women's health up front, and that has really, um, I'd say, really propelled my career. I have a deep respect for women and women's health and what women go through that reinforced my journey, if you will. I'm an OBGYN by specialty. My patients came to me before they were planning pregnancy at an individual's first prenatal visit. I would actually sit and talk about and educate my patients about doulas. And so I really made sure, whether it was around birthing classes, I didn't just talk about Lamaze. I talked about all the methods of childbirth education. I am hoping and really pushing and advocating that we allow access to doulas be as simple and efficient as possible. Part of my pregnancy plan is also going and looking at your insurance contract. If you know you're gonna be pregnant, there may be services you need that are useful for you when you're in a pregnant state. I really am excited about the next generation. I personally feel there is a freedom, I'll call it, that they have that I don't feel like I have. And I think they know and understand their power and I think they know and understand their voice. They're smart, they're intentional. We want to increase the number of black physicians in this country because we ultimately want to see a, a healthy black America. And to do that, we need to preserve and reduce attrition of medical students and our black residents. Whatever resources and support we can do to do that are very important. I launched the 1895 campaign, and that's after our year of founding, and that really was to um, raise scholarship dollars to help bridge the gap that some minority students face because we wanna support them through the process, because we understand how how difficult it can be. I've been accused of being a bit idealistic, and that's okay. And uh, I value my creativity. I call myself a creative problem solver. I would like to say, if I was talking to my village, I first have to tell them thank you. Sometimes people don't understand what they mean to you, and I hope that I am able to manifest what that is. I want to make my village proud. I rely on my village. They are my legs, they have to be. What's given me hope is that while there is an awareness that has evolved over the past several years, there is a responsiveness 
there's resources and funding being put to this. And I feel many leaders in our country are being called to task on it. And I'm happy to see that happening. We have all that we need. We are all that we need. And we are enough. <laughs>